Yeah, so guys, this is Amit uh, Kucheria and Akshay Sharma. We're building PCB Kingdom for some months now. And uh, we are going to be hearing a lot about uh, how that journey and the kind of stuff that they're building. Right, guys, over to you. So, yeah, so I think an interesting topic to talk about EMS automation challenges, or in simpler words, how not to drive your EMS provider crazy. So that's that's what we have been working on from last uh, one and a half years on trying to find ways not to drive him crazy. So let's get to the, the first set of slides. So the quick intro to uh, both of us. I've been working as a hardware designer who dabbles in a little bit of software whenever required, but not my favorite part, but uh, whenever needed, I dabble through it. I work on digital circuits, industrial designs, uh, power, uh, electronics, as well as some automotive uh, designs. In the past, I've had experience of working as a hardware designer for the Arduino. Um, had an opportunity to set up their India production plant. And now here I am, a few years after that, trying to help everybody with their hardware challenges and making it, their life easier to take their designs from design to production. I'll uh, let Amit uh, give in to himself. Hi, guys. Um, so yeah, I'm the opposite. So I am uh, a software engineer who actually dabbles in hardware. Uh, I know enough to be dangerous, uh, but I couldn't design uh, good hardware if, if my life depended on it. Um, but um, I was tech lead for 96 boards effort at Lenaro. Um, and one of the things we found there is there's a lot of great ideas. Um, people have good designs, but then if you want to do prototyping at, at uh, uh, small uh, prototype volumes, uh, it's extremely hard. Um, similarly, it just takes too long to go from your designs uh, all the way to uh, production. Um, you, you've got to talk to multiple different vendors. You've got to... Uh, get quotes, and then you have to. Um, I mean, that the entire process is is, is essentially very uh, uh, outdated. I feel, and I thought we could do better than that, and so that's why Akshay and I we met at a uh, uh, we met at Siddesh, who's probably here uh, uh, at his um, um, uh, maker space. Makerspace, uh, and uh, we decided we could do better, and so that's how we started PCB Kingdom. Uh, by training, I'm, I'm professionally I'm a Linux uh, kernel developer. I've hacked on Zephyr R tosses and, and so on and so forth. Carry on, Akshay. So yeah, so let's go to the first question that we will have in ourselves: What is EMS? We've just been using this word all over the place. So I mean, Wikipedia gives us a very tough definition. Let me just simplify it for you and put it in very simple pictorial form. Whenever you have to manufacture uh, any electronic board, you need a PCB, you need components. So you're just going to get uh, your PCB manufactured. You're going to get uh, components procured from different vendors. You're just going to get them all put together into a nice looking board. That's what you're going to take home and work and make something beautiful. So let's go to the first most interesting part of it. Uh, it has three major parts, the PCB manufacturing, then you have to procure the components, and then you have to get them all put together. So let's start off from the PCB manufacturing side of it. I know designing PCBs, An Anul is going to come back and uh, teach us or give us some nice uh, heads up how to use KiCad to be more professional and more proficient. But let's look at how the things are going to be manufactured. Then let's look at design with his help. So what's what's basically a PCB? Uh, a circuit board which you see, green, blue, yellow, whichever color it comes down in. Simply it's just a uh, circuit designed in an electronic uh, CAD software. It generates a bunch of files called Gerber files. Those files are used by manufacturers and you get a, a circuit board coming out of it. So from here, Let's look at, it sounds pretty simple. It's just a bunch of files going down to 
abort what's what's complicated what is the challenge why are we trying to solve this sounds right you are pretty correct on this but let's let's see why the issue now we got about 10 to 20 very known softwares out there which are used for designing take it from kicad eagle altium proteus uh, orcad you there are like about 20 30 very famous ones each one follows a different rule so uh, the biggest issue right there is the files which are being generated the gerber files they have their own naming conventions this standard started way back in 1979 and there are some softwares who are still following the oldest form of this uh, <coughs> oldest form of the guidelines the latest uh, version was still in 2014 this keeps evolving every few years as the consortium comes to a better understanding there are and then there are players like mentor graphics who come with proprietary um gerber formats as well so having a a unique software which is going to read through all these together and be able to give you something easy to use is a challenge in itself so let me just give you a, a slight sneak peek at how the naming convention of these files could really go down to i'll just pull up an excel sheet which will show this out Second. Okay. The Excel should be okay. Just give me one second. Yeah. Okay. So, as some of you might be knowing, you have PCBs from two layers, four layers, six layers, eight layers. So, just going from all the layer names here, the first two columns is signifying some layer names. and over here i have names of softwares and the file names which are generated from there they are not similar at all every software has its own naming convention has its own uh, uh way of putting it out there so again my computer just decided to act a little funny give me one second please apologies for this Okay, then we'll bring it back up. Yeah, so Eagle will generate a different file format. KiCad will generate a different file format. Okay. So every layer gets a different name. We'll come back to the layers and the naming one more time. But just for this, uh, a sneak peek towards it. Every software has a different name, and every for software generates a different extension to it. so it gets really complicated at trying to automate this and picking out which software generated this and how do you handle these files so going away from this let's look at what these layers are so in a simple a pcb is nothing but a stack up going from copper layers and uh, some form of dielectric layers in the middle so i have given two examples here a two layer board and a uh, a uh, eight layer board over here you have multiple layers the most important ones are the coppers the top copper bottom copper then you have the green layer which is sitting on top which is the color of the board over here i have chosen a green for example you can have any color of your choice you have a silk screen which is nothing but your namings uh, branding any kind of information which you want the user to be uh, looking at while using the pcb and then you have a paste layer which is used for production so the naming convention could be just as simple as solder paste top dot gbr whereas for a eight layer it will be the same and you just keep adding for every layer possible the naming conventions are something that the first step towards trying to identify if these files are uh, working for us or not let me go to what comes next next is something called a stack up uh each pcb layer is made up of some form of dielectric some form of <coughs> uh copper 
So it's going to be a copper, a dielectric, a copper, a dielectric, a copper, a dielectric, copper, a dielectric. You can go up to 20, 30 layers. So every layer will have its own properties. Every material will have its own properties. The choices are infinite. Uh, there are about 20 different types of materials you could choose as your dielectrics. You can define the dielectric constant you're looking for. You can define the thickness of PCB. <coughs> so in simple words, you have about 10 parameters to choose from to define how a PCB should really look like. So to make it simpler for anyone to use, uh, we always suggest using standard stack ups. Uh, every manufacturer has its own capabilities. He can, he's, he may be good at two layers, four layers, six layers, eight layers. He may be using a, a predefined thicknesses. So whenever somebody needs a PCB manufactured cheaply and fast, we always suggest using a standard stack up. But the biggest question comes, will this work in every possible case? The answer is no. When you have a very strong uh, <clears throat> RF based design where you need uh, every layer to be of a given dielectric so that your antenna performance is tuned accordingly, you may want to change each and every dielectric constant so that you get your antenna tuned to uh, your needs. So over there, uh, different stackups will be required. People have been uh, changing these annotations, uh, the file names a lot. It's not easy for any software to really pick up uh, what which file really belongs to which uh, layer. The next problem which comes down to is people putting excess data for us. The biggest example will be uh, you have the Gerber data put out there, right next to it, you have a small table showing what is the stack up required for the PCB. As soon as a automated system goes in to read these files, it looks at, oh, I was trying to find the dimension of this PCB. It should be only having some data from X to Y, but because of the table, you get a really different uh, size of the PCB detected. So this could, this creates a lot of problem in automation. That's what we are trying to solve in different ways. Uh, people are still using very old uh, Gerber naming conventions, which have been outdated by at least 10 years. So in simple words, if you follow these guidelines, your PCBs generally will work uh, quick and fast. Anything, uh, uh, Amit, you want to add here? No, I think we're good. Okay, so let's go to the second part. Once the PCBs are manufactured, let's go towards uh, getting the components from different places. So in every folder, you have a very simple file for any design, a file called bomb.xls, or it's just an Excel file with uh, the bill of material. That com just tells you which component goes where on that PCB. What are the resistors, capacitors, ICs, different, uh, uh, connectors which are going to be on there. It's just specified in this file. We have to go then apply. How tough can this be now? The question is, it gets even more complicated because every uh, resistor, every capacitor has a unique part. It's called the manufacturer part number. So let's look at a bomb. Let's start from a simple example, how a bomb would look like and uh, what do we care about. This is a very simple bomb which anybody in any form of uh, electronics working with it would have made at some point of time. So it starts off with, oh, I got this part called C1, C3 of this quantity. That's the value I want. That's the package I want. It sounds good. That's, that's what we have done for all of them. But let's look at it a little closer. This bomb is not that easy to decipher. It is a mystery in itself. So we have no tolerances, no wattage, no, uh, there are values missing and there are packages missing. So I cannot identify if this person wanted a resistor of let's say 100 ohms here of 0805 package, but he did not tell me if he wanted 1%, 5% or a 0.5%. So it gets now the 
question comes if you are going to a local shop he will ask you this question when we are trying to automate something like this who do we keep asking this question to can the uh, computer really find this out himself the answer is no that's why we are looking for a manufacturer part number then the second part over here the person just mentions he needs a connector it needs six pins i'm like sure here you go you have six options which one do you want to choose if we do this for a bomb which has 100 parts and if we keep asking them for questions for these are your 100 options for your each part it's going to take him about 4 days to just answer oh this is my final bill of material this cannot be a solution for scale up of manufacturing if you are trying to do this in in large volumes a product a week or any r&d lab who's trying to dabble into this uh at higher speeds so having this information being read automatically through different system is very important let's look at it from what a reply do we get from an automated system out of a list of 27 we are only able to find two th th through the automated system the other 25 parts need clarification there is something or the other which is missing so in the next let's look at how this should really look like this is the same bill of material i have just added a column called mpn a manufacturer part number so this is a unique number for each and every component you want to choose so it may take you a bit of time in making the choice of what you really need but when you send your files down to the uh, manufacturing you're going to get exactly what you want chances of errors reduce chances of conversion reduce you are saving time cost effort and you're going to get more and more reliable in your design so moving from having a a very perfect bomb let's look at what do we really need to do to get our components uh, sourcing sourcing right you need to give be clear on what your manufacturer part number is make sure you don't put a uh, unique uh, every shop and all will put their own uh, sku on it uh, i want to call this uh, resistor of 100 ohms let's say uh, pcbk123 when i'm going to try and source it in market is not going to be so easy for me to find it has a unique number we should keep using that every uh, component should have a proper designator which is going to be looked at in a, another file called pick and place file which is used for assembly we'll talk about that later but uh, all this the designator also has to be mapped so that we know you have mentioned something called as c1 and that's what the value corresponds to this is the manufacturer part number this is c1 we are able to match them and able to use them don't you really don't want to be using a part in your bill of material which is out of stock as soon as you punch these files for manufacturing you're going to get a reply oh your thing cannot be manufactured here are your pcbs you find yourself your this component and uh, as soon as you get to know this you have to go back and uh, go change the part so this is i mean you want to be not doing this not using parts which have really high <coughs> lead times that is it's going to take really long for it for uh, come from factory to the assembler so that it gets you are waiting on this one part for the whole board to be soldered because you either run all or you don't run anything because when you have a pick and place machine running to place all your 200 components on a given board you can't make it run for one component it's a process which has to be run once you do it for the whole batch or you don't do it so a lot of times uh, you we get delays because of these kind of parts uh, getting <coughs> uh, stuck uh, from manufacturer customs or wherever it be now let's moving from uh, getting components now it's time to we have already got the pcb we know how, what not to do there we know how not to order components now once we have all these parts together let's get them all together to make that one fancy looking soldered board i like okay now this is easy now we have already taken part of the major hurdles we already had the right parts we already got the pcb we feel we got it right 
So now somebody just has to match the following things together and give it to us. So that's what PCB uh, assembly is all about. You get the PCBs, you get the components. You have another file called the XY file, which is nothing but a placement file. It tells us which component is going to be sitting at which place. For example, this particular chip has to be placed at this place. So it's going to be given an XY coordinate in this particular file. Maybe his name is X1. X1 sitting at coordinate number 10, 10. It's going to be placed out there through a high speed pick and place machine. OK, sounds good. Where is the challenge? The challenge still comes in. I'll, I'll hold on and show you what, what the problem comes at. So right now, just to let you make life easy for the assembler, let's just give him the placement file properly. Let's give him a proper file name. Let's give him designator names like X1, R1, R2, all this in one place. Perfect. Every user is going to be asking us for two things. Can you handle a small volume rapidly for me? The answer is, if you go to every manufacturer, maybe yes, maybe no. Because running a batch of five is equal effort as running a batch of 2000. It's the same effort putting all the things, loading into a machine, pick and place, and getting it done. You're asking, can you give me a standardized pricing formula? Maybe yes, maybe no. So these are things which I'll talk about how we have handled a little later. So now let's go to an interesting part. Where, how, and how you can really trouble your assembler. You, you felt you had everything right. You got your right uh, piece of component. You had, you got your right piece of uh, PCB together. Now it's time to assemble. We're like, this is the easy part. Now let's look at how we really trouble our assemblers. Okay. If you see these images out here, I bought the right parts. What the customer told me. I got the right PCB, but the package is incorrect. What do I really sold here? That's what the assembler is going to be asking. Over here, we have the footprint mismatch again. Over here, we have a connector which has an incorrect footprint. What do I really do? Over here, it's another package mismatch. Over here, we have a switch. It's got five legs, but there are only three holes. What do I do with the rest? Isn't this really troubling the assembler's life? So moving on to the another sort of way to trouble him, we say, OK, I am giving you a bomb. I'm giving you uh, parts. Let's look at it. So after looking at the bomb and the parts, we find out, OK, according to the customer, we have four parts which are supposed to be there, which do not match. And we're like, OK, he might have just made a tiny mistake. Let's just see what logically fits. We realize, oh, these two guys are small enough. They can fit here. This guy's big enough, he might be able to fit here. You're like, okay. But then getting a conversation with the customer, we realize he wanted something else. He wanted the big uh, tantalum capacitors here and the smaller ones here. So having your thinking you had your bomb right, thinking you had your PCB right, you still have opportunity for making things fail. Now comes the biggest horror for the uh, Assembler, the mystery of the connectors. You, the customer sends a packet of connectors <clears throat> and makes the assembler guess what to solder where. Even let's say there was a four pin connector needed. He has packed one four pin connector, which looks like this, another which looks like this. What does the poor assembler do? He will have to keep having communication with you and asking for questions and really figuring out what you need where. So the, uh, if you're not able to give good data, it's always going to add time. So when we are trying to prototype fast, we need to be more accurate on our data and uh, make somebody else's life easier for soldering. When you're hand soldering five words, it's fair. You can do whatever you feel like. But when you're trying to asking somebody else to solder, make sure you have uh, given him enough information so he does not keep coming back to you for uh, help. Let's look at some of more mysteries of the connectors. Now, the footprint does not match in the first image here. That's fair. OK. In the next one, we got the footprint right. 
but we did not get the diameter of the holes right okay in the next one we got the diameter and the footprint right but we did not get give enough spacing for the connector so isn't this going to trouble the poor assembler again so moving on from here once we once the assembler really figures out what not to solder for you he's going to be oh there is still more problems now comes according to the bomb we have a location called s1 which you can see here the bomb says there is a switch here the assembler goes sure here is my switch i'm also supposed to solder it he's like where the hell do i really solder this then he figures out oh the customer needed a terminal block he is providing incorrect information so this is one of the last stages in your production and you're figuring out you have a error you have lost enormous amount of time now let's look at another kind of a problem where there are some uh, devices have orientation leds only work in a given direction anode to cathode cathode to anode the way you're going to can configure it you make your choice over here the designer was very nice he was kind he made a really nice dot over here that this is going to be my negative side that's where you solder but he still made one error he put <coughs> he did not look at another layer which is called the paste layer so when the the pcb actually got manufactured the dot did not show up because this got taken away from the paste layer now we have 200 leds with no names and no direction what am i supposed to solder and how and if you're doing this for 1000 boards 200 into 1000 you are at 200 1000 leds you do not know which direction you need to solder at so moving on from here another set of direction issues over here you see there are three capacitors which are marked these came up with without any form of direction and reverse capacitor can blow your complete circuit out so having directions for each and every part mentioned in some form or the other either in the on the pcb or in a document separately should be there to make the somebody else's life easier putting a uh, picking up a footprint and making a quick pcb that's fair but can somebody else use your work to uh, bring it to life so moving on to another another kind of uh, what humans think and what machine thinks out here uh over here you have an another interesting problem you have a component called xt3 it's a crystal it's got four legs two are ground two are the terminals for the crystal logically we can see it's a rectangle i can flip it put it again it will still work pin number 1 1 and 3 are interchangeable 2 and 4 are interchangeable now the you can understand this i can understand this but can the machine really understand if this is how you are supposed to be putting it through so adding a simple dot right next to it and giving orientation can really help the manufacturer out so let's just move out some general notes about assembly everyone <coughs> and i mean by everyone the most experienced also have a tendency to make error so do not trust your own data keep rechecking it make sure you give the right data assembly is the highest stake of the whole product and it's the last step so if a fault is figured out in assembly you have already lost about 2 to 3 weeks in your time so if you're going to have something manufactured in 3 weeks you have a issue at week 2 and if you have to go back or to box 0 you are adding three more weeks to your old timeline so make sure your assembly data is always right so from moving from what the data of all three phases pcbs the components and moving on to what what your assembly needs we go on to what really a turnkey situation in our present scenario is so let's look at it what we are in this uh, what happens in india right now one has to double through three processes separately themselves they have to go to pcb manufacturing component sourcing and pcb assembly which is handled at different vendors at different places so you have to be 
sure of how logistics works with each vendor it is going to require collection of data of spreadsheets from all these vendors put together and trying to find pricing putting together timelines and trying to understand how the whole project planning is going to be the quotations in itself since it's a human effort you're going to give your file somebody's going to keep asking you these questions because you have given them incorrect data at the end of it you're going to get a quote this may take even up to several days and i've seen it, it takes even up to weeks after that uh, coming in for uh, certain parts of really high lead times let me give you a present example the stm 32 f0s and stm 32 f1s which are like very go to uh, microcontrollers right now are sitting at 17 weeks timelines uh it starts at it used to be a dollar 1 uh, chip presently it is a dollar 7 chip can you really identify this can you do this so we need to be very careful about this and since prototyping is always slow and expensive we need to be careful with what we are trying to offer to the um uh, uh assembler now let's look at how we at pcb kingdom have tried to redesign this and rethink and what can make somebody else's life easier we have gone through these problems tons of time so uh in a <clears throat> so what we really are we are a logistics com uh, company and a manufacturing company where we understand your complete end to end logistics for electronic manufacturing we offer 24 by 7 uh, quotations with under a minute if your files are right we'll give you a quote right there including for your components that if a particular part is going to be available for stock or not and if you have uh, mistakes in your bill of material we will point it out right there right then so <coughs> it allows you to not hassle through uh, customs and import duties we offer inr billing with uh, gst compliance we offer it in two weeks presently covid has hit the logistics a little we are running a little slower we are at 3 weeks for now uh for any design going from prototype uh from your design to a fully assembled board uh we have very predictable timelines we have highly optimized pipelines we do automatic uh, <coughs> order routing for supply chain uh, disruptions example for the stm32 we have been able to identify different sources so from there uh we also <coughs> are uh, moq independent that means we handle anything from as small as 5 pcbs going up to a few thousand boards if you really need that manufactured in the same 3 week timeline so to off handle this uh we do it a little differently we have uh, real time apis for gathering component data which gives us the live stock the minimum order quantity for any part and the pricing brackets they are setting at what is the right price to buy it at and what lead time a, a component is throwing right away so as soon as a file is uploaded we will be able to tell you if your part is available something can be manufactured or cannot be once you have agreed we uh, that this is what you want to manufacture you place an order we use an internal tool called bomb optimizer that's that's the magic of the game it <coughs> goes down to everybody where how how to make this cheap reliable how to optimize pricing he at the end of it it decides at the what are the number of orders for a day we are able to load all the orders in all our vendors at one shot we have to do is end of the day go to each one and just make the payment and all orders <coughs> are placed in one shot which is optimizing somebody else's work we don't have to dabble through talking to 10 20 people and getting oh this part is available not available we handle it automatically this enables us to give uh, faster deliveries at all volumes so we are uh, maintaining some common part lists uh, that will enable us to be much more uh, cost efficient and uh, reduce uh, procurement times 
So this is uh, something on a common part list, which is going to be live on our website in some time uh, soon. Let's uh, let's do a small demo, and then I'll talk about what our uh, further goals are. I'll I'll speed the demo up. I am running short on time, so I'll do that. Okay. So let's just go to quickly to the website. So let's hope the demo cards are on my side today, <laughs> and we have nothing going wrong against us. So I already have a uh, a zip file created, which is uh, let me just show you what the zip file should be really containing. It should be having your bomb, it should have your Gerber files, and it should have your placement files, which is for assembly. This is for procuring components. This is for your PCB. So we just go ahead, upload a file. I have a set of demo folders. So let's look at something called a Jelly 2. It's a simple project. Let me just look at what's inside the folder. So Jelly 2 has a set of Gerbers. Okay, for some reason I have an empty file. Uh, okay, I just uploaded the Gerber. I'll show you what was the content of the file. So it's just going around getting calculating what the size of a PCB is, what are your components you really need, how many layers you are, <clears throat> then it'll just give you options of what you need to be doing. By the time this runs through, I will upload another file on another another uh, parallel. That's my third tab and the fourth tab. So over here, I'm going to have some missing files. So I've already created something with which does not have a few files. And on the third one, I'll upload something which has a few errors in the bomb. So just to show you what the site is really capable of. and. Uh, so that's my third file, which I'm uploading parallelly, which has incorrect bombs. Okay, so let's look at the first one. The code is already here. The website says, cool, your design can actually be processed. But maybe you just want to wash out. You got three warning. That is, you have uh, two parts, which are DNP. And you have a component which is probably going to be running out of stock. Uh, but we'll still be able to manufacture for the available quantity. Let's go to the next. Proceed. Uh, the quotation does not belong to you. Okay, let me just uh, log in again and re-upload. Demo board had to come in, so sure. <laughs> so let me just. <clears throat> okay, I do not have a valid ID. Let me <laughs> get another. Instance. Give me a moment, please. So probably I'll just log in from too many users on that particular instance of Chrome. I'll just upload the file again here. Let's not worry about it. So. Sample orders, demo. We were uploading Jelly 2 and right there. So the file just went up for upload. Yeah. It's processing. Give it like about 30 seconds. Let's just wait for it this time. And in parallel, I'll yeah, let's just wait. <laughs> then let's upload the second one the next time. Okay, it's process to give the same error again because those particular parts are giving the error. You go to proceed. It gives you it gives you how your PCB really looks like. It was a nice fancy looking uh, uh, jellyfish. Somebody had designed. You have all the uh, quantities out there. There are no other extra hidden costs. You can just choose out which one you really like. You like white, go ahead, go for it. You like immersion gold, go for it. So. It just gives you the PCB you really want to look at. So this particular, uh, it's an open source design, which I'm just uh, using as my example. I just choose, OK, I want to manufacture 50. And if you look at it, the pricing just keeps dropping as you go out higher in volume, which is fair. You want to say something to us, feel free to uh, write us, hit proceed. It'll just ask you to log in, hit pay, you're done. It gives you option. Oh. I just need to hit pay. That's my cost for 50 pieces. Uh, I got my taxes added. That's my address, and I'm done. So moving on from here, let me just upload one of the two error ones, and uh, so that I can uh, have time for my questions. So let's just look at something which has a incorrect bomb. Uh, bill of material. I have put in dummy data, as in I've just put in random random words in the middle of the manufacturing part number. And uh, let's see what does the website do with it. So 
so yeah so i had put in in place of mpns a dummy data random data these kind of words in the bill of material and it just does not let me go and take the order right there he's like go fix these files i can't i can't buy this i can't make it so if i can't make it i can't buy it so it just throws you the error right there it also has there are some files which are not missing but paste files are not your uh, concern files at certain point so it allows you to go with warnings and uh, it had one dnp and a few errors so that's kind of my demo here uh, which uh, kind of shows you what the site can really do um, i can get into a lot more different uh, things what the site can do a little later i use it as my testing tool as well if my production files are ready for production or not i just keep uploading the file oh all my parts are there i'm getting no npn errors i'm not getting any uh, gerber errors my files are good to go that's how i use it there um then it goes to what we really are intending to do so <clears throat> uh, what we are our ultimate goal is reduce the reliance on the eastern uh, vendors get more and more competitive uh, on pricing and be as speedy as possible pcb manufacturing and assembly is already done in india so we are not buying anything from outside and bringing it in and just pushing it out with our own labeling on it it's all done here component sourcing is our present bottleneck our indian customs are our biggest friends because we do not know when something can be stuck presently we have a customs uh, a part of stuck from last 10 days waiting we'll get it sometime soon so we are rolling out to the world uh, very soon we are supporting the western customers or any other worldwide customers through inr billing but we will support all other currencies very soon and the biggest and the most important part which we feel is going to help the complete manufacturing community is through us helping our vendors which is to optimize their manufacturing capabilities help them with uh, better qa services automating qa for them minimizing time spent in uh, doing back and forths with minuscule things like oh your part is not being found you know, we are not able to source this all this is being done we are also bringing in a replacement part list which is going to make life easier for everyone to use so you have a standard part list you want 100 uh, k register oh i should just use this because it's available with them so that's a kind of thing coming in the common part list and the replacement part list are uh, these kind of structures we will be able to suggest parts in some time as well we are using some standard open source uh, projects which are uh, doing this and we are contributing in them as well so that's kind of it on my, the pcb kingdom site i am uh, looking at anyone who has any question i need to be answering uh, please go for it i think uh, while you were speaking uh, Aksh, uh, sorry amit has been uh, answering taking that. care of the questions yeah Uh, there are a couple of questions like for example do you have to handle importing of components you know uh, and as amit replied yeah uh, so that's not something that i have to worry about uh, so but yeah, uh, that, that's a feature I, i i personally like a lot because i hate replying to emails from anyone including dhl and mauser so so one of the things uh, akshay has already referred to this i mean we are we are extremely interested in, in improving the overall uh, ems system in india and uh, what we are trying to do is come up with templates essentially to to make sure that your order gets fulfilled correctly the first time without too many back and forth back and forth with with your ems vendors and so uh, if there are any ideas on how we can simplify your lives uh i uh, and git push does not qualify anuj <laughs> <laughs> um i think um, i think we are we are happy to uh, to talk to you about that I and mean, you've already heard about some of some of our plans if there's anything else you have uh, for us uh, please let us know we are actively working on this and um, uh, i don't want to use clichés but essentially uh, we want to uh, Uh, i i might have to use it basically i want to be able to manufacture all this locally in india uh, without uh, without having to depend on uh, uh, our eastern uh, vendors 
for a lot of these things. Uh, at the moment, I we feel that we are price competitive, um, uh, but the 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 thing that uh, is a challenge in India is uh, is turnaround times. So that's one of the things we found. I mean, uh, uh, if you send it to somebody in um, GLC PCB or all PCB, uh, they can they can get any kind of uh, PCB out to you. I mean, it, they their turnaround times are literally two to three days, and uh, we are that that I think is going to be the big struggle. But as we uh, work with uh, these vendors and uh, we we improve our own processes, uh, we believe we can uh, we can uh, get to those efficiencies as well. So we are working with uh, uh, our local partners about that. And I just like the last Anul's comment. No ETO okay on it. I mean, yeah. Uh, if there is a note on uh, any PCB, we are not putting our own <laughs> symbols and logos on it. But uh, yeah, so we know we know the pain. We completely sympathize with you. All right. Uh, I guess uh, that's it. I mean, guys, just go to pcbkingdom.com and if you have any questions, I've already also included uh, uh, the Twitter handles for uh, both of these guys. So feel free to ping them on Twitter as much as you want. Uh, and uh, I guess I'm going to now uh, call on Anul for the next talk, which should actually have been the talk before this because that talks about designing PCBs. So if we are doing a tenet kind of thing where uh, we are flipping time or something, but now we know how to manufacture PCBs. Now we're going to find out more about 